Welcome to our continuous coverage of the BRICS summit being held in Xiamen in China. Cultural program is currently on and these are live visuals from Xiamen. Let's take a look.
And these are live visuals from Shyam and this was the inauguration ceremony of the bigger BRICS cultural festival that will take place later in September. In fact, the theme of the festival is celebrating culture and bridging arts and many artists from around BRICS countries will be performing over this festival which is scheduled later in September. That's our continuous focus, the BRIC Summit here at WION. And uh, joining me live from Xiamen is WION Senior International Correspondent Ramesh Ramachandran. Ramesh, uh, a lot of uh, things, developments have been taking place, uh, especially since today morning, which uh, have been the biggest takeaways for India specifically when it comes to the declaration that was signed by leaders from the BRICS countries earlier today. We understand terrorism, uh, it was a big breakthrough that terrorist organizations' names were named this time at the BRICS summit, something which uh, hasn't uh, been done or seen before in a summit of BRICS countries. Absolutely, Sana, for the very first time, in, uh, in India's uh, foreign policy, recent foreign uh, policy history at least, uh, never has been a case where a multilateral document such as the BRICS declaration mentioned terrorist groups by name, those which are operating from Pakistani soil and who conduct and carry out activities directed against India in particular. Now for the very first time, in the words of uh, the Indian uh, diplomats uh, here in Shaman, the Shyaman Declaration has mentioned a couple of Pakistani terrorist groups, in fact more than a couple, by name and for the very first time also talked about those terrorist groups which are operating, like I said, against India in particular. Now remember, Prime Minister Modi has in the past described Pakistan without taking, it, uh, taking its name, described Pakistan as the mothership of terrorism and he tried to, India did try to include a stronger formulation or language in the previous uh, BRICS right. summit that was held in Goa in India, but that was uh, vetoed, in a sense, by the other four uh, BRICS members. But this year's, uh, the ninth BRICS summit here in Shaman, for the very first time, there's been a strong language, especially by naming the terrorist groups operating particularly against India. And that, to my mind, uh, is a diplomatic win of sorts for India. That right. said, the focus remains on terrorism, not any one particular country. Absolutely. And Ramesh, uh, we are playing out visuals from the cultural event, uh, you know, at this point in time. And we're also hearing that the Prime Minister will be leaving uh, for Myanmar after completing uh, all his engagements in uh, uh, in Xiamen in China. But uh, given the fact that culturally uh, BRICS nations are trying to come up uh, with uh, symbolic ties for the future, especially when it comes to the area of filmmaking, there is a film which is jointly uh, produced by the BRICS nations uh, in which India, Japan, all these BRIC, uh, India, I beg your pardon, uh, Brazil, India, China, South Africa, all these countries have come together and put that film together. Uh, the Prime Minister also, while addressing, spoke of cultural uh, ties and people-to-people -people contacts. How do you see that developing? What's the mood? What's the sense there in uh, Xiamen? Uh, can you please share with us? Indeed, as you mentioned, Sana, the gala dinner, the gala program is happening even as we speak with the Chinese artists presenting a cultural show for the five BRICS leaders and five uh, BRICS plus uh, countries who have been invited to the Shravan Summit, namely Mexico, Tajikistan, Egypt, Guinea and Thailand. So this is a you know, gathering of five and five total, ten countries in all. And uh, we're seeing... Uh, the uh, very strong formulation and language, especially from BRICS nations, on economic and trade issues. But that said, primarily, Sana BRICS is an economic grouping, and uh, to that extent, BRICS always focuses on trade and investment issues, on sustainable development, climate change, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the political pillar and the cultural pillar are comparatively the weaker links in the BRICS uh, paradigm. But off late, we've seen all the five BRICS countries make efforts to in encourage people-to-people -people ties, cultural contacts. And that, to my mind, is also happening now as we speak in Shaman, with uh, China putting up a gala show for the, for the BRICS uh, leaders who have been uh, gathered here over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, 
the challenge before BRICS countries, Sana, is to not only uh, encourage trade and investment between their uh, five countries, but also resolve the political differences uh, that may exist between uh, one or two of the BRICS countries. So, to my mind, as a Chinese commentator put uh, to me a long time you know, ago, that the more the commerce, the less chances there are of conflicts arising between uh, the BRICS countries. And he was referring in particular to India and China. And that, to my mind, is the next uh, big shift as in, you know, in between India and China, where they will try to build on the economic convergence, but at the same time, tackle the political differences and issues head on, like we saw happen uh, barely one week ago on the Doklam standoff on the 28th of August when India and China sort of uh, decided to expeditiously disengage from the standoff. And uh, that has led, in a sense, to the recent Shaman Declaration, which speaks for the very first time in strong words on the issue of combating terrorism. So Absolutely. BRICS is an idea whose time has come. It is here to stay. But the challenge before BRICS countries, as you said, is to increase people-to-people -people contacts, cultural ties, and also to reinvent itself in the second, as it enters the second decade of its existence. Absolutely. And Ramesh, uh, you know, we've been talking about the BRICS declaration uh, and a precursor uh, to that declaration being signed as well. All the analysis here at Weon since morning, uh, since last evening, so to speak. But it's important uh, for us to get a different flavor to our viewers in terms of this cultural program. Give us a sense. We understand it's the inauguration ceremony for a larger cultural event that kickstarts sometime on the 15th of September. And uh, the theme of it is celebrating culture and bridging hearts. So clearly a message to all the other uh, BRICS nations, also BRICS plus nations, uh, about a common goal and the targets that the BRICS might now, uh, might now have set. Indeed, uh, just uh, as the BRICS countries focus on trade and investment issues, they're also equally conscious of the attempts being made to promote, for instance, innovation among the young entrepreneurs in all of the five BRICS countries, to promote educational academic ties, to promote uh, traditional medicine, which was first mooted by India, remember, at the Goa summit last year. And at this year's summit in Shaman, both all the five countries have decided to take that step forward by forging greater cooperation among all the five BRICS countries that may have their own respective traditional medicines and ways to encourage and promote uh, in their each other's uh, country. So there are many other facets of the BRICS. It's just not about business or commerce. There is, there is much more happening here in Shaman, especially uh, on the margins of the BRICS summit. A lot of uh, other academics are here, a lot of uh, students, volunteers also, you know, uh, taking part in the BRICS deliberations here. So all in all, it's, it's a very convivial atmosphere here, uh, although business uh, meetings do take place, but it's not all, all business and commerce, but a lot more to BRICS than just uh, trade and economy. All right, and Ramesh, uh, just a short while ago, when all the BRICS leaders uh, were addressing another session, give us a sense of what were the main points that the Prime Minister touched upon when it came to India and its role at uh, the BRICS uh, summit. Indeed, uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi's interventions uh, at the 9th BRICS summit here in Shaman have been, uh, if I can, I can answer that question in two parts. One, he has tried to hard sell India to the BRICS members at large by showcasing India's progress on the last two or three years, especially in terms of uh, the goods and services tax of having a uniform countrywide tax, uh, which will ease the business opportunities for not only Indian companies but also foreign companies who may want to invest in India. So that predictable uniform tax is one thing which Prime Minister Modi has highlighted uh, regularly at his interventions here in Shaman. He's also spoken about the various programs his government has launched in particular, namely Digital India, Make in India, Skill India. So he is uh, he's literally showcasing India's uh, potential for the BRICS countries to come and invest and, uh, and manufacture in India as well. So that is one aspect of his intervention. The other is to articulate India's concerns on, on issues close to its heart. For instance, as I mentioned, terrorism, and, uh, economic connectivity is another issue. Remember uh, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and uh, the One Belt, One Road initiative of China passes through territory which, which India considers as its own territory, sovereign territory. And uh, India has consistently maintained that uh, economic connectivity is welcome and should be welcome 
but not at the expense of any country's sovereignty or territorial integrity. So uh, if you ask me in one sentence, Prime Minister Modi has tried to hard sell India's uh, potential and achievements over the past three years, right. at the same time articulated India's concerns at the, at the, the, global, uh, at the global table, as it were, to elicit a favorable response from the countries going forward. All right, Ramesh, on that note, just stay with us. I'm going to come back to you in just a bit, but beautiful visuals coming to us from Shyamin as well, just dipping in to that cultural event once again. All right, going back to we are on senior international correspondent who is reporting live from uh, Xiamen. Ramesh, uh, you know, it, it's common knowledge that uh, many policy analysts say that BRICS grouping, just like many others, is uh, meaningless. It's not of much use, uh, saying that the members have very little in common and they're more focused on their uh, economic challenges rather than focusing on other member states and what are their challenges. Do you think perhaps this BRICS summit has set a new benchmark in terms of addressing uh, challenges, talking about business, coming out with uh, strong statements, naming terror groups. In that sense, do you think that uh, this has perhaps set a new benchmark? Absolutely. In a sense, what you're saying is equally true of uh, another uh, organization called the European Union, 
which uh, is, is symbolic in many ways of the evolution of BRICS as a regional grouping. But that said, BRICS is an idea whose time has come. It was first conceptualized way back in 2001, and the first summit was held in the year 2009. And two years later, in 2011, we saw the addition of the fifth BRICS member state, that is South Africa. And since then, we've seen BRIC come in, BRICS come into its own, as it were. And today, it has reached a, put, reached a position where its voice is being heard around the world and also held in high esteem. Remember, India and China are among the two of the countries which are called the engines of global growth. And all the five BRICS countries together account for about 23% of the world GDP and about 40% or more than 40% of the world population. So clearly, there the BRICS voice is, cannot be ignored at any cost and any country can ignore uh, BRICS only at its own peril. So BRICS uh, is, is here to stay and it remains to be seen how they reinvent themselves, their agenda, their manifesto, their mandate for the second year of their existence. Uh, BRICS has completed a decade and as Prime Minister Modi said, he remains hopeful that BRICS can live up, live up with potential, not only in terms of the economic agenda or the component, uh, but also in terms of political, uh, political management in shifting the balance of power from the from the developed economies to the developing economies, which are the five BRICS countries. So clearly, BRICS uh, is, like I said, is here to stay. But the only challenge or the only concern is, can it reinvent itself, as you mentioned, to forge common ties in spite of their respective differences? Say, for instance, India and China have their own, own uh, competition going on. Absolutely. But that does not preclude the possibility of cooperation between countries such as India and China. Remember, China has invested heavily in India. In Chinese companies uh, have invested in India. In India. Similar Indian companies are invested in China. So the idea is to become stakeholders in each other's economic growth. And that, as a Chinese commentator said, uh, the more the such interactions, the less chances there are of, of conflicts arising in the first place or to manage the differences. So clearly, BRICS uh, might, might uh, be of help or of benefit to all the five countries. And uh, there is talk already of expanding the BRICS membership. Right. And we've seen in the last three or four uh, summits, all the BRICS members invite countries in their neighborhood for instance, Brazil invited Latin American countries, Russia invited Central Asian countries, India invited the BIMSTEC countries last year, and this year we think China invite five more countries, namely Mexico, Tajikistan, Egypt, Guinea, and Thailand. So BRICS, uh, to, to, you know, to, to many a mind here in Shaman, is a very happening organization, if I can put it that All way. All right. Uh, Ramesh, one last question to you before I let you go. Uh, give us a sense of now what's the plan for the Indian Prime Minister? What does his schedule look like at the moment? Right, so tomorrow is the concluding day of the three-day BRICS summit. But tomorrow, from India's perspective, would be the, the big highlight or takeaway would be the much-anticipated meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India and President Xi Jinping of China, coming as it does, uh, as it will, barely a week after both sides uh, disengaged from the Doklam standoff. And that will be one key takeaway or one crucial meeting to look forward to. In fact, I've been asked many Chinese journalists here as to what India expects from that crucial meeting. And there's a lot of anticipation here, if I can put it that way, Sana, about uh, the Xi Modi meeting tomorrow, which will take place at about 10 a.m. local time or 7.30 a.m. India time. So that is one meeting which both sides, uh, both countries are looking forward to to set the pace, as it were, for the, for the future interactions, to narrow down their divergences and also to find or devise a mechanism whereby they can, uh, they can tackle Doklam-like issues going forward. If they do happen, then there should be a mechanism where Indian officials and Chinese counterparts can sit together and thrash out issues and not allow such issues to snowball into a conflict. Remember, at the June summit uh, in, in Astana, Kazakhstan, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi met for a bilateral, and on that occasion, both sides agreed not to allow their differences to become disputes and the the intention the expectation here among many right. people in the Chinese media and also the Indian media here uh, is that uh, that spirit will survive for the foreseeable future and we can see that happen manifest itself when the two leaders meet here in Shaman tomorrow absolutely and we are at uh, we all will be continuously uh be on top of the story coming in from China from the BRICS summit with, uh, of course, Ramesh Ramachandran getting us live inputs. Ramesh, for the moment, thanks so much uh, for joining me and sharing your thoughts and perspectives on this big story. Meanwhile, we will be slipping into a short break. You take a look at these visuals of the cultural event that's going on in Xiamen.